Got my Honda Bond warmed up. Got the garage warmed up. We're ready to put the bottom back on this CB750 engine. Welcome to Hack a Week. So last week we left off with everything just like you see it here. We've got the pistons and cylinders on the engine on the top half of the crankcase. Got the connecting rods bolted to the crankshaft. Today what we're going to do is get the bottom onto the crankshaft. There's a couple of uh, seals that need to go in here. There's a little o-ring. There's a crank seal that goes on the end over here that you have to put on now. You can't put it on later, it won't slide in. It's got a little notch in it, I'll show that to you. If you forget that, you're going to be crying because you're going to have to take the bottom back off to put it on. So, well, uh, I got my bolts all lined up here, figured out where everything goes, got it all laid out here in my little parts bin, and we're ready to get to work. Let's take a look at what we got going on here today. So there's the crankcase, everything all assembled. There's an O-ring that goes right here. This is the... Uh, oil gallery and that insert right there needs to get into the crankcase if it's not in there already that is removable <laughs> as he drops it down into the crankcase that's all right let's run over here for a minute and grab a little magnet tool and pull that back out so anyway that goes into that hole right there that little dowel there's also two more alignment dowels, and right now they're inserted over here on the top half of the crankcase. There's one right there, and there's one right there. They're right up near the crankshaft. One there, one there. So you need to make sure those are in place. I've got uh, all of the transmission stuff in here. That didn't get removed at all. All of this stuff stays in place. And we're gonna have to clean this up a little bit it was sitting on the bench here. It's got some dust in it. I'm going to clean all the bearing surfaces, get some fresh uh, assembly lube on all those bearings. We're going to clean this surface really, really well. Uh, scrape any old gasket material off. This is where the Honda Bond is going to go. It's going to go on any of these surfaces where there is a mating of two pieces of metal of the crankshaft. Everywhere. Every single one of those spots all the way around. And we'll put a little bit, probably on this side is where we'll apply the Honda Bond. That way I can grab this with my hands and be able to hang on to it and not get the Honda Bond all over my hands and smear it around. Uh, let's see, the crank shaft seal is right here. And if you see uh, close enough here, see that little lip that's on it? That's what helps hold it in place. That is gonna go right over here and I think I can point out to you right there where I'm pointing at right now, that is where that little lip goes, right in that little groove right there. So we've got to install that, and we'll put the O-ring on. The O-ring's easy. I mean, it just basically slides on there, and that's that. There it is. That's installed. So let's get that crankshaft seal on. I'm going to clean this area just a little bit with some parts cleaner and get this whole thing just wiped clean. I need to get the crankshaft raised up a little bit and I can do that just by lifting up on it and rotating a little. It'll actually rotate up away from the bearing surfaces there. I'm going to take a rag and clean this out in here just a little bit. There's a reason for that that I'll show you in just a minute. And uh, I'm going to clean off the seal just a little. I want to get all the oil and stuff off the outside of that seal. We'll wipe that dry on the outside. You want a little bit of oil on the surface where it rubs against the actual uh, crankshaft, which would be right here. And so I can put uh, a tiny bit of assembly lube on there as a pre-lube. We'll just put some of that all the way around. The reason for that is it's never ever a good idea to have a seal, a radial seal like this with uh, a dry fit because 
well when it starts up it really should have some lube you can ruin a seal sometimes in just seconds if it doesn't have any lube on it now that I've got that really dried off what I want to do is just smear a really 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 thin layer of Honda Bond around here just to give it that little bit of an extra seal I've got a little bit here on my finger and uh, just gonna put a tiny bit around there not very much in fact I'll probably wipe a lot of it right back off I just want a, a little just to help hold that seal nice and tight tight in place and this Honda Bond stuff it dries up pretty damn quick so you gotta work fast so let's get that on there I'm push that on and we're just gonna rotate this back in place and make sure that that little groove lines up where it's supposed to make sure the crank is all the way down and there we go that takes care of that wipe off any excess there I don't want a whole lot of that Honda Bond on there just a tiny bit it's a little bit of insurance that's all just to make that seal fit a little bit tighter okay so that little bit with the Honda Bond on that seal that's that's actually optional that's just me being a little bit cautious want to make sure that thing stays in place now I'm going to take a razor blade single edge and just scrape any leftover sealant Honda Bond whatever that there may be on here pretty much did this once already when I had everything apart but I want to go over it one more time and make sure that it's really really clean now like on some of these places in here you just want to get a little bit of that Honda Bond there because it's mostly going to be there just to seal up that area right there because it could work up through the bolt and leak out so it's important that you get it on there because this whole area right here is going to have oil flying around in it when the engine's running so anywhere around these bolts where they go through you need to have a seal around them so that the oil doesn't work its way back up the bolt and come out up at the bolt head get this all nice and clean everything's pretty well cleaned off here uh, nice and dry I sprayed some brake clean on there some parts cleaner what I need to do now is get all the holes free of any kind of debris. I've got a little compressed air here with the uh, air compressor. Any place where a bolt is going to go into a hole and it doesn't run all the way through, you want to make really, really sure that you get all the fluids out of there. Uh, fluids like oil or parts cleaner or anything. Reason being, when you put that bolt in there, if there's liquid in there, liquid doesn't compress. And if you start tightening that up and that liquid can't go anywhere, you actually run the risk of cracking the crankcase. It may not be so easy to do on an aluminum piece, but I have done it myself on cast iron. I did it on a cast iron block once. Cracked it internally into the uh, oil uh, area. And it wasn't the end of the world. We fixed it, managed to take care of the issue, but uh, it's still a pain in the ass when it happens. So a little bit of prevention is just Give it a squirt with some air. Make sure all that fluid's out of there. Any place where there's a hole that has a bottom to it. And when you're doing this, of course, watch out for your eyeballs because it's gonna blast back at you. We'll do the same thing to the uh, upper half of the crankcase. See that fluid coming out of there? That's what we need to get out of there. And we're going to clean the top of these bearings really well. I want to make sure there's no junk on there. Give everything a little, a little bit of a blast to get all the dust and particles and everything out of there. 
Okay, now we need to do a little inspection here. I've noticed that uh, this rod that the shift forks ride on has popped out of place internally. We need to take care of that, definitely. Uh, that's not a good thing. And uh, it's a little weird. It's not wanting to drop back into place just right, but there we go. We'll push that in, make sure that's all lined up okay, because that would really suck to try to put that back in from the outside only when you can't really get in there to align it. It's held in from out here when this whole assembly goes on for the uh, for the shift barrel and all the mechanism that does the shifting, but make sure that rod is pushed in there like it should be. Okay, let's see, what else have we got? Uh, we got the dowels in place, all the rod uh, crank bearings are in place and uh, I checked the torque on the bolt that holds in the primary drive tensioner make sure that's tight there is another little uh, roll pin right here and that uh, is pressed into the to the crankcase that's in place everything's good there this is gonna want to fall down which is fine because it'll line up right here on uh, this gear so you can actually kind of use that as a guide if you look at this hole and see about where that shift fork is lined up right now. And ahead of time we can get this floating gear lined up in about the right place just by eyeballing it. Okay. Now over here on this side we want to make sure that the uh, locking ring is in place and it is. The other rings are in place on the bottom side, those little half rings that I talked about in a previous episode. Make sure that that shaft is in there, not moving back and forth. That can cause problems. Um, everything looks good here. Let's see, let's go ahead and get all the slack out of the timing chain. We'll pull that down just to make sure it's all good. Give everything a little rotation. Yep, everything looks really good. Now it's time to get some Honda Bond on here. As I mentioned earlier, we'll put Honda Bond on all these surfaces. It's a little tricky to reach in here to get some of these. Um, so you know what we could do in that case is put it here because it's much easier to reach here. I don't have a crankshaft in a way so I can just put a little bit of Honda Bond on each one of these little islands where things go together right there and there. That'll make sure that that seals up. And then anything that's on the perimeter of the crankcases, I can do on this side. Uh, anything that's a little bit easier to reach, I could do on on uh, the top, the bottom half. <laughs> okay, let's get started on that. Got a fresh pair of gloves on, nice and clean. We don't want any contaminants getting in here. So let's get a little bit of Honda Bond on these surfaces first. This stuff is really weird, sticky, strange, strange stuff. I'm going to smear it with my finger just a little bit. You just need a real thin coat. You don't need a whole lot. It's not going to take very much at all. In fact, I think I'll just use my finger to put it on everywhere. It seems to work pretty well. I'll give you a little closer view of what I put on there so you've got an idea of just how much there is there. It's just a little layer. You don't need very much. So we'll go ahead and get that everywhere on all the surfaces I talked about and move on from there. I've got the Honda Bond on everything that I need to have it on. I put a little bit on each side of the crankcases. I get a little bit of assembly lube now on each one of the crankshaft bearing shells. And we'll be ready to drop this case half onto the top case half. Let's give that a little bit of a smear. Try to keep it away from where you put the Honda Bond, obviously. Okay, double checking that everything's lined up right. Crankshaft seals okay. One last look at everything in here. Last chance. O-ring. Crank seal, got the two dowel pins in. That's lined up about where it needs to be. Got the rings there. Everything looks good. Uh, 
I'm gonna double check the torque on uh, the self boiler up there for the chain, that little tray. I just want to make sure that that's really tight. Yep, that's okay. All right, here we go. I could get a hand through this area, which will help me hold it. into place. There we go. And just drop that on there for now and see where we are with that shift fork. I wonder if I can see in there at all. Make sure that's lined up okay. Should be because it dropped right in. So I guess so. It looks like like things are wanting to drop into place. Um, back here, I'm hanging up just a little bit. And I can see that that's because there's some gears not quite lining up. So let's just rotate things just a little bit. Raise this back up. here that need to mesh properly so I have to turn things just a little bit to get all that to work out right. Here it goes, it just fell right in there just like that. Okay, this makes things just a little bit easier to turn. I just want to double check that everything's good in there with the transmission going to rotate it through all of its gears. All right, referring to my chart that I printed out from a website shows me where all the bolts go and I've got them all laid out here. Uh, the, the main ones that go across here there are two, four, six, eight, ten of them. And uh, they're all the same except for, let's see, the ones that are right here. You notice that these bosses sit up a little bit higher than these do. So these are the special ones that go in there. And they have a little taper on them right there. It's actually a discontinued bolt if you go looking for it online. And I actually have one extra here on the bench. So we're going to put the bolts in, but before we do that, I'm going to put just a little bit of the uh, machine oil on there, the red marble mystery oil. A little bit on the threads, a little bit on the washer and the head. That way I get a real true torque setting when I tighten those down. So we're going to just put all of those bolts in right now and follow that oiling procedure for every one of them. Go ahead and get these started. All right, they are all snug only. They're not torqued yet. Just, just to where they feel like they don't want to turn anymore. Now we've got some six millimeter bolts that need to go into all these holes. Get those next. I laid them out ahead of time in this little parts bin and you can see that they're all numbered and they say bottom or top where they go. So I've got all the ones that go in the bottom and now all I have to do is just refer to my drawing here and I know right where they go. So I can drop all those in. Same thing, a little bit of oil on the threads, a little bit of oil on the head. These are all labeled number uh, seven on the drawing. A little bit of oil, a little bit of oil. And let's see, almost all the way across here, these take a number seven. 
there are a total of four of them. And then out here on the outer edges, there's one that I've got labeled number eight. And that will go in those holes. So we'll just keep filling holes. Kind of funny, my chart here I noticed isn't, uh, isn't exactly perfect. I noticed that they have a number wrong. There's a number nine listed over here, but it's too long. That's actually where a number eight goes, a shorter one. So if you run into any of that, just uh, stop, take a look at what's going on, and figure it out. Solve the problem. So that's all the ones in the bottom. Now we can go ahead and snug those. Just like the other bolts, just to where they feel like they stop moving. And we'll go ahead and torque them later. Time to torque everything up. So there's eight millimeter bolts and there's six millimeter bolts. The eight millimeter bolts get tightened to 18 foot pounds. The six millimeter bolts get tightened to eight foot pounds. Eight foot pounds is not very much. It's, it's really light. It's not as tight as you would think it is. There's a tightening sequence that you follow as well. For those of you that don't have a manual, I'm going to see if I can get this up there for you for reference and you can always pause this, do a screenshot of it if you want, but there's the tightening sequence that you want to follow when you tighten these up. Very important. Okay, let's torque these down. I've got my torque wrench here. I've got it set to 12 foot-pounds. Why? Because I'm going to do these in two steps. Uh, the book just tells you to take them up to 18 foot-pounds. I never do that. I always try to do them in, in steps. Do them to a smaller torque first, then go back and do them to the final torque, and then go back and check them one more time. So here we go. I'm going to follow the chart. This one goes first. Let's take it up to where it clicks. That's 12 foot-pounds. We're going to do that to every one of these. Nice and easy. Okay, first stage is done. Now we'll take it up to 18 foot-pounds, do the final. So there's 15, 16, 17, 18. One. Two. Three. Always go nice and slow with the torque wrench. Four, five, six, seven, eight. nine and ten. Now we'll do the six millimeter guys here. Uh, I've got a different torque wrench. I'm using an inch pounds torque wrench. It's a little more sensitive. This one starts at ten. So I'd rather go to one that's a bit more sensitive which is the inch pounds. So how do you do eight foot pounds on an inch pounds torque wrench? Simple. You just multiply eight times 12, 12 inches in a foot. So uh, that's 96. So we got it set to 96 inch pounds and we torque these up nice and easy, same thing, till it clicks. I've already done these. This one is a 10 millimeter bolt. It has a nut on this end, comes in through that side uh, I didn't see a torque spec on that, but it's a little bigger bolt. I went ahead and took that to uh, 25 foot-pounds, and that's uh, here where the final drive is, so that's a pretty critical bolt. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of stress going on right in that area. Over here on this side is another 8 millimeter, and that one I took to 18 foot-pounds. There's supposed to be one here that, according to my chart, is an 8 millimeter, but the hole is a 10. So I'm going to do a little research on that and find out what's up with that bolt. Uh, any of you out there that have actually rebuilt 
a CB750 K3 1973 and you know exactly what the deal is with that bolt, um, give me a heads up uh, in the comments. I'd appreciate it. So that's the bottom. Now we get to flip this whole thing over and we do some bolts that are up on the top. Got the stand back on the engine and it's time to set it back down. This thing got a lot heavier. Whoa. Everything on the top is six millimeter, except for the head nuts. I had to order the head nuts, they're on the way. But we'll put in all of the six millimeter bolts and they all torque to eight foot pounds as well. And that's all of those. Just gonna go ahead and run those in by hand and take them all to snug. Okay, we got these two bolts when I had it upside down. They do load in from the top. So those are done. They're already torqued up. There are 10 six millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna go ahead and torque those up now to eight foot pounds. And just use common sense in how you do this. So we'll go over to this one and torque it to eight. And we'll come over to this side, start with this one, then we can go to this one, that's it. Remember those two O-rings? Now that everything's flipped over. I'm going to take a little peek in there. You can't really see what I'm looking at, but I just want to make sure that those O-rings are seated where they are supposed to be, and indeed they are. So I'll go ahead and tap this cylinder the rest of the way down onto the crankcase. Okay. I put a piece of uh, that plastic pipe here to hold the chain for me just keeps it easy to grab. If it falls in there, you can fish it out with a hook tool, no problem there. So um, let's see, where are we at? We're ready to put a cylinder head on, but that's gonna happen uh, next week. Well, that's a wrap for part 15. We're looking good. Next week, we'll get the cylinder head on. I'll have the nuts here at that point in time, and I'll show you everything you need to know about getting that in place. And we'll probably put the camshaft in there just to hold the chain in place and we'll go ahead and time that camshaft on another video so that's it for now thanks for watching thanks for all the donations they really help out and until next time cheers Everything on the top except for the head bolts, uh, uh, head nuts, that's right. Anyway.